Feeling slow? How about a brain upgrade? Look around at the creatures of Earth. A lot of them have some amazing abilities, like the Taurus Scarab Dung Beetle. Sure, it's not very glamorous, but it can pull 1,140 times its own weight. That's like a 15-pound French bulldog pulling a 9-ton Tyrannosaurus Rex. So, why can't we do that? Well, when it comes to physical strength, that just wasn't the main focus of the human genome. We went all in on our brains. Take a look back two million years at our hominid ancestor, Homo habilis. Homo habilis had a brain case volume of about 600 cubic centimeters. Today, the average person has between 1,200 and 1,300 cubic centimeters. That's more than twice the volume. And our brains only take up 2% of our body weight, but they require 20% of our body resting energy. Other creatures look at us like we're this guy. Now, it's important to remember, humans are not necessarily at the end of their evolutionary path. So, is there some way we could boost our intelligence within our own lifetimes? Well, lots of studies show that a change in lifestyle can help boost brain power. For example, aerobic exercise promotes stem cell growth in the hippocampus, which is the part of the brain concerned with, uh... Memory! Then there could be improvements in nutrition that help our brain power. Best evidence for this is when the United States introduced iodized salt and saw the average IQ increase by three and a half points. Now you may have guessed that these changes mean modest improvements in our intelligence. So is there any way we could turn it up to 11? Well, one way is to look at something that is pretty counterintuitive, and that is brain damage. I'm talking about an extremely rare and highly controversial condition called acquired savant syndrome. Now this happens as a result to a head injury or a neurodegenerative disease, and what happens is the person suddenly discovers the ability to do something incredible like sculpture or, or play music. So how did they get that ability? Some scientists think that we have locked gates in our brains that hold back our abilities, and that the injury or condition has unlocked those gates and allowed the people who have acquired savant syndrome to do these things. Maybe by using techniques like fMRI, we could learn more about the condition and perhaps in the future, even learn ways to unlock those gates without actually causing brain damage. Now it's time to talk about brain implants. <laughs> You see, computers and brains do similar things, but they go about in a very different way. So if we can get brains and computers to communicate more easily, we could see a quantum leap in human intelligence. And we've already made some progress. Paralysis patients with brain implants have been able to control robotic prostheses. And get this, in 2012, researchers with USC and Wake Forest made a brain implant for the cerebral cortex of rhesus monkeys. They taught the monkeys how to play a picture-matching puzzle game. Then they gave the monkeys drugs that diminished their performance. They then activated the implants. The implants stimulated the part of the monkey's brain that was activated whenever it made a correct choice. And they saw that the lost mental acuity was regained. Now granted, most of this research is all about recapturing brain function that's been lost. It's not about amplifying what we already have. But in the future, we could see this technology boosting our intelligence and giving us new choices. Like, you want to be a great scientist? Well, let's just turn down the part of the brain that's in charge of confirmation bias. Or you just want to be a better human being? Let's boost that altruistic behavior. So I've got a question for all of you. If you could boost any part of your mental faculties, what would it be and why? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel and then watch these videos. It's the smart thing to do.